Atrial fibrillation. Three to five million Americans have it and it can cause strokes. We're going to talk about in this video how lifestyle medicine can eventually treat and maybe even reverse atrial fibrillation. Let's go. Hey, this is Stephen Loam, lifestyle medicine cardiologist. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. Let's get in to atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is a fast irregular heartbeat when the top chamber of the heart starts to beat really rapidly at 400 to 600 beats per minute. Thank goodness not all that gets down to the bottom of the heart. That would be ventricular fibrillation, which is usually fatal. So when we have somebody with atrial fibrillation, we ask ourselves three questions usually. Number one, why do they have atrial fibrillation? Number two, what can we do about the symptoms that atrial fibrillation causes? And number three, how do we lower the risk of it causing a stroke? Now, as a lifestyle medicine cardiologist, I have two additional questions. Number four, is there any way that we can prevent atrial fibrillation from happening in the first place? And number five, once you have atrial fibrillation, how do lifestyle changes affect symptoms and how often atrial fibrillation can occur? Can we put it into remission? Can we reverse it? Let's look at what the science shows. Let's go through these five questions. So number one, what are the most common causes of atrial fibrillation? Well, it ends up being hypertension and sleep apnea. We know hypertension is a predominantly lifestyle related disease and more than 90% of hypertension can go into remission with the proper lifestyle changes. And we also know that sleep apnea is very much so associated with being overweight or obese. If you are losing weight down to your ideal body weight, in many, many instances, more than half the time, sleep apnea goes away. So already right there, the top two causes of atrial fibrillation are lifestyle-related diseases. So question number two, what do we do about the symptoms that it causes? Well, this is complicated. Every patient's different. We either take a heart rate control strategy or a heart rhythm control strategy. A heart rate control strategy is actually just giving medicines to slow the heart rate down, where a rhythm control strategy is working to keep the rhythm normal and keep the atrial fibrillation away. Now, of course, all this is done usually through medications, but how does lifestyle work for this? Well, exercising, losing weight, controlling blood pressure, avoiding alcohol and salt, all can reduce the incidence of atrial fibrillation attacks. So make sure you're following the proper lifestyle and hopefully you can prevent the atrial fibrillation from causing you any major symptoms. Now, question number three, how do we prevent a stroke? This is a little more complex. Atrial fibrillation can cause a stroke because a blood clot can form in the left atrial appendage. And if that breaks loose, it can go to the brain and clog an artery in the brain, resulting in a stroke. We have a scale to help us determine who is at risk of stroke and what that specific risk is. It's called the CHADS-2 VASC score. And depending on how many points you get, your doctor might recommend you going on a blood thinner, such as Eliquis or Xeralto, Pradaxa, or Coumadin. And let me tell you, as a lifestyle medicine cardiologist, yes, I embrace alternative treatments, but it needs to have the science and the evidence to support it. There is no science to support anything like garlic or fish oil, thinning the blood enough to prevent stroke related to atrial fibrillation. So do not try to take these supplements instead of a prescribed blood thinner that your doctor gives you. We're talking about stroke here. Let's not risk it. Now into question number four. Can we prevent atrial fibrillation from happening in the first place? Well, as we saw, the top two causes are lifestyle-related diseases. I was giving a presentation once for a large group of exercise physiologists, and right after my presentation on lifestyle medicine and heart disease, an electrophysiologist got up and said, hey, let's talk about atrial fibrillation. He gave his presentation, talked about ablation, the medicines, and I raised my hand when he was done and I asked the question, what do you think about the percentage of patients where we could have prevented the atrial fibrillation from happening in the first place? And he said, based on his expertise, probably close to 90%. So I tried to find actual science to support this number and it really isn't out there, but there is a lot of research that shows a large percentage of atrial fibrillation is preventable. The exact percentage, kind of hard to say, but if you eat healthy, exercise, maintain a healthy weight, avoid excess alcohol and caffeine and other stimulants, make sure you don't have sleep apnea, chances are you can prevent yourself from having atrial fibrillation. Only a very small percentage of it would be considered genetic, and remember, like most things, the gene loads the gun, but the diet and lifestyle pulls the trigger. Now, how about if you already have atrial fibrillation? Can lifestyle medicine actually reverse it? 
Can it make it go away? Well, there is some pretty good science on this. Actually, the guidelines from the American Heart Association, the American College of Cardiology, give a class one recommendation, the highest level of recommendation, to losing weight in anybody who's overweight or obese because it helps the symptoms and lowers the incidence of atrial fibrillation. So right there, we know it, we have the science. And of course, avoiding the alcohol, the excess caffeine, regular exercise is important as well. There are many different stories, which I'll link in the description below, of patients who have taken their atrial fibrillation and put it into remission, essentially kind of cured their atrial fibrillation just through lifestyle changes. Such a powerful thing. If the cause of atrial fibrillation is lifestyle in most cases, then the treatment should be lifestyle. Now there are some instances atrial fibrillation is related to other things like heart valve disease or, or thyroid related diseases. So make sure you see your doctor and follow their advice because every specific situation is different, but lifestyle medicine is powerful. Try to use that to help prevent you from having atrial fibrillation and if you already have it, to try to stop it in its tracks. Well, I hope you liked this video about atrial fibrillation. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, turn the notifications on, and let me know in the comments section below whether you've had any experience with atrial fibrillation and how lifestyle medicine can affect it. Until next time, stay healthy.